What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing the match reaction, match review and match analysis of the Manchester City versus Aston Villa game in the Carabao Cup final where Manchester City are now the back to back to back Carabao Cup winners. Absolutely fantastic. Before we crack on with this video though, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content then make sure you help support my channel by subscribing, pressing that red button, pressing the bell and putting your push notifications on. I'm aiming for 6,000 subscribers so any help towards that would be much appreciated. You can also find my social medias which you can find in description below and popping up on screen for my Twitter and Instagram if you want to go and follow me on there. You can also find my email in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business business inquiries leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below so we're going to crack on with this analysis of this game we're going to start off with the teams first Manchester City made eight changes to the team that beat Real Madrid at the burn about eight changes this is a cup final hmm interesting Bravo in for Edison John Stones was trusted in for Otto Mendy Benjamin Mendy was out Alexander Zinchenko brought in that one doesn't surprise me because uh, obviously Benjamin Mendy is going to be suspended for the game against Real Madrid. So I, I should imagine Zinchenko will be getting a couple of games. Just to try and get his rhythm before being uh, rested. Before going into the game against Madrid. So David Silva started ahead of Kevin De Bruyne. Big call that. We also saw Phil Foden in for Riyad Mahrez. Good for Phil Foden. Aguero also started ahead of Gabriel Jesus. As Raheem Sterling started too. I had a look at Manchester City's bench for this game. It is really scary. Look at it. It was scary. Uh, I was just wondering if it was going to regret making so many changes. Obviously, it wasn't to be. It was obviously not going to be the most wonderful, fluent football from Manchester City. But at the end of the day, we just wanted to get the job done and win the first major piece of silverware for the season. And we've done that. So it is an astounding success for Manchester City, for Aston Villa. They went with a strong team, as imagined. Nylon was in ahead of Pepe Reina because Pepe Reina's got some kind of injury. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but he weren't starting. Nylon did. So uh, Graylish starting as well as Trezeguet was on the bench. So first half, pretty boring first 15 minutes all in all. But 19 minutes in, we managed to get our opening. Uh, for ball into the far post from Rodri going in towards Phil Foden. Phil Foden, instead of going for goal from a very tight angle, decides I'll actually lay it off. And he lays it off and nods it back. It goes off the back of um, target's back. Goes into Sergio Aguero, uh, he manages to balance himself and get a shot away. Ends up taking a deflection and going into the far, uh, well, towards the far post, into the far side of the corner from Tyro Mings and into the net past Nylon. For 1 0 Manchester City, 19 minutes in, we didn't have the greatest first 15 minutes trying to find our feet with so many changes. I'll tell you that every single day of the week. First blood to Manchester City, and it's just what we were looking for. It got even better 30 minutes in. Ilkay Gundogan and uh, Jack Graylish, uh, the tackle went in. It hit Graylish before rebounding back and hitting Gundwan and going out. And the linesman didn't have a clear view of it. Gave a corner. Wasn't the correct decision. I think everyone could see that it wasn't the correct decision. But a corner was given and, and Villa were punished for that. Uh, City managed to get a corner. Gundwan, the person that the ball hit, to go out in the first place. Takes the corner. It's a good ball in, to be fair. It's a good ball in. Rodri's there, right place at the right time. He's attacking it. I'm not sure why the Aston Villa defence didn't manage to pick him up. Manchester City was either the tallest or second tallest, but arguably Manchester City's best aerial threat that we've got. Rodri, no one's picking him up. You're allowing him to get towards the centre circle. Just smashes his header into the ground. The keeper's going to find that very difficult to save. There's a little good pace on the ball. He manages to find even more pace off his header. Really good header into the back of the net. Poor defending. Like I said, it's going to be dominated by the corner being given when it shouldn't have. VAR cannot have a look at it. I do not know why. It's not something I agree with. I think VAR, if they're going to be involved in the Premier League football games and the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup and the Champions League, I think that the VAR should be uh, in charge of all of it and everything. It should be able to have an influence on. If you're going to let it have aspects on if it was a foul or not in the build-up, you're going to let them decide if it was offside or not, then you should be able to decide if uh, the free kicks that were given in the corners were the correct decision in the first place. I feel like uh, when there's penalties taken, the keeper's off the line. VAR can't interfere. Why not? City have been hurt a couple of times now by players either being in the box or goalkeepers coming off their line that we've missed penalties. Yes, there were poor penalties, but uh, at the end of the day, you hear for correct decisions and the correct decisions weren't made. And why is that? We've got VAR. VAR's here to make sure that everything is correct. 
and yet correct decisions are, aren't being made. And Villa have been punished at the cup final. I can only feel the pain for them as City went 2-0 up. Um, it was also a bit of poor defending. They can look towards that. But uh, as a City fan, I'll take it every day of the week. But uh, it's just personally, from my point of view as a football fan, isn't something I agree with. But Aston Villa did have something to celebrate in the first half. 40 minutes in, El Ghazi was put in. Ball came over. John Stone's not too sure what he was doing. It's like he had his shoelaces tied together and he fell over under under no pressure whatsoever. I do not understand. Anyway, El Ghazi's away. Puts a really good ball into the box and Samata's there to meet the header and put the ball. This was another, just like Rodri's header, another really good ball into the box and another good header. Get it bouncing into the ground. Make it nice and difficult. With lots of pace there, the keeper's going to struggle to save it and Bravo doesn't end up saving it to make it 2-1 and then game on. John Stone's there. Massively at fault, Zinchenko couldn't manage to get over and foresee the danger to cover, uh, and so Aston Villa had a leeway back into the game, which, considering we dominated from 19 minutes since we scored onwards, uh, to go in at 2-1, uh, I felt like we could have got a third just to try and seal this game. It didn't happen instead. Now, um, we had a job to do in the second half. 2-1, that though, at half-time, both sides... To, to be fair, were being rather clinical going into the game. I felt like Villa, they were sitting just a little bit too deep, allowing too much space for Manchester City. They were putting eight, nine men behind the ball, and when you're doing that, you need to make sure that there's no space, and it was giving us far too much space. It was just moving um, cross-field balls with ease. Uh, to be fair, our pinging of the balls was absolutely on point, and I felt like players like uh, Gundogan, Rodri, F um, Phil Foden had exceptional halves going into this game. Uh, I thought that all, all three of them... Fantastic going into that game. It was just pulling apart Aston Villa, pulling strings, was scoring goals, was creating chances, was making things happen. Like I said, my only criticism really is that Manchester City didn't have them free goals. We didn't have the uh, the trophy already signed and sealed and delivered. We nearly did, but we didn't quite have it there. And because of that one error that we had, which we've been punished for, we've seen that time and time again over the last few seasons. We know that there's enough quality in Premier League sides that if we're going to allow them a good opportunity, they're going to take it. And that was the case. And so I was disappointed that Villa was still in the game. Felt like going into the second half, it was dangerous. Villa, they're going to have a go, particularly the longer it goes on. It'd be very interesting if it went on longer at 2-1, which is ultimately what happened, uh, because I fancied that Villa would sit deeper just to invite the pressure on, try not to concede, stay in the game for as long as possible before having a go towards the end of the game, which again is something that was uh, go that did end up happening. It's something that City did deal with. So that, uh, in my opinion, is a really big positive for us. Now into the second half, I felt like it was very passive. Villa were working hard, staying into it, trying to keep themselves into it, keeping it tight, keeping it to two one. Then they came out to play. They made a couple of substitutions. Treasure Gate came on in the last twenty minutes or so, made their substitutions, try and make things happen. And City were then starting to be more careful with the ball and gathering it away. It was not until the eighty seventh minute that Aston Villa managed to find themselves with some kind of half chance to create something. Got into the 87th minute, a corner to Aston Villa, put a really good ball into the box, test the City defence, Engels wins a header, central is area as well, gets a good head onto it, it's not into the floor with lots of pace, so it doesn't beat Bravo this time, Bravo managed to get a couple of good hands onto the ball and push the ball away. He does push it onto the post and it does end up bouncing clear and City clear their lines, but it is, a, it is an important save. It's a good save from Bravo. It's a, it's, a, it's a save I'd expect a goalkeeper to make, but with the situation, what we're looking for is the chance that Aston Villa were looking for, and Bravo rose to the occasion, made the save, and because of that save, City end up winning the Carabao Cup. So I thought, actually, that that was really good from us, and well done also to um, Claudio Bravo on making the save there. So ended up winning Manchester City the competition. 89 minutes, Bernardo Silva had a shot well saved um, from a uh, ball player across the box there. City did have the chance to try and kill it off. But final few minutes, five minutes added on at the end. Aston Villa did do their huffing and puffing, but to no avail, Manchester City... Full-time whistle goes, become, like I said before, the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Carabao Cup champions. Full-time Aston Villa 1, Manchester City 2. Absolutely brilliant, though. With the 2020 Carabao Cup winners, with League Cup holders, we've retained our trophy once more. And it, it's just one of those things. It's where you want to keep the winning feeling. You want to keep the winning momentum. Just go into as many competitions as possible and try and win it. And use that as confidence going into other games. The Premier League might be gone, but we've got the FA Cup coming in midweek. What great motivation. We've won com one cup competition. Go into that game now. Try and get forward. Get that winning feeling, that adrenaline, the feel of what you want to win, to win, and to win, and to win. And just to carry on 
on winning that and have that winning mentality. And City, uh, under Pep Guardiola, is something that we have improved on tenfold. And I think that now the players really get it. And I think that is absolutely brilliant from us. Winning the Carabao Cup ch um, match, I felt like we deserved to win this match. I felt like we deserved to win the competition. Uh, we take the competition very seriously. And this is what happens when you take the competition seriously. You end up winning trophies. And it's something that Pep takes seriously. It's something that City takes seriously. And ultimately, that's why we are the back-to-back-to-back. Carabao Cup winners. So, stats for the game, 30% possession for Aston Villa, 70% possession for Manchester City. Wembley's pitch is big, so they're allowing City too much time on the ball, allowing us too much possession, in my opinion. City, though, weren't that creative. 22 shots, um, four on target. That's not very good. Two goals for four on target is actually a really good conversion rate, but just four shots from 22 is something that we do need to improve on going forward. Aston Villa, though, had five shots and three of them on target, so Bravo's had to make a couple of saves, and he has done to keep City into the game. Uh, one has obviously gone in, but, uh, you know, it's something that City do need to work on. 666 passes is a lot for that big Wembley pitch. It's normally around four to 500 that we normally get, so 666 is a lot of passes, which just shows how deep Villa was sitting. 89% pass completion rate. Kudos, because that's brilliant. 285 passes from Villa. 71% pass completion rate. A couple of clear-cut chances created by City. But Aston Villa created more clear-cut chances than City. Not many teams do do that. So, fair credit. Uh, 30 balls put into the box from City, connecting with 8, which is a big improvement. It's normally around a 10% conversion rate from our crosses. Today, it was at over 25%, which is really good. Aston Villa connected with 3 of their 16 balls put into the box. City had more corners, more offsides, more recoveries. Aston Villa, though, a lot better in their, uh, well, in attempting their tackles and making the tackles. Villa also better with the interceptions, the blocks. Um, City had more clearances and more headed clearances, and aerial duels. City were more dominant, but... Uh, Predominantly, most of the defensive stats is dominated by Aston Villa. Both goalkeepers, though, had a couple of saves to make, and they did do that. In the end, though, City just had a little bit too much for Aston Villa to be able to contain with. So, my conclusion, well done to Aston Villa getting to the Carabao Cup Finals. An enjoyable game. Gave us a really good game there. It was a hard fought. There was lots of battles. It was something that City had to really work hard to get the job done. I mean, City were hoofing the ball in the last minute, clearing their lines, panicking, just trying to get the clock over so they can pick up the win. That showed how hard Aston Villa worked in this game. So, fair credit to them and best of luck for the rest of the season and I hope they do stay up. Because City have won this cup now, it does mean that there will be an extra European spot created for sixth place in the Premier League. So whoever finishes sixth now will be going into the Europa League. Had Aston Villa won it, and I assume they're going to finish in the top six, that uh, Aston Villa uh, would have been going into the Europa League instead of the team that's finishing uh, in that last European spot. So sixth or seventh, dependent on what happens in the FA Cup. For Manchester City, I thought Fernandinho excellent, Rodri excellent, but Phil Foden to me was absolutely majestic, and he is my JSGC man of the match. I'm delighted for him the young City lad starting in the cup final and putting in a fantastic performance uh, I feel like Phil Foden has done himself a world of good going into this game I feel like he should be getting more starts he should be starting against Sheffield Wednesday I think he's a dark horse in my opinion to be starting against Real Madrid I thought he was very impressive down that right wing and it's an outlet should leave Rossane not be fit that if City wanted to go with Bernardo Silva in the centre then we could move Sterling out wide and possibly have Foden on the right like we did in this game because uh, I feel like Phil Foden's got enough quality there to cause problems I feel like he'd do a job on Real Madrid I think he's that good I think he's absolutely brilliant I think it would cause a shot to Real Madrid I don't think they'd be able to prepare too well for Phil Foden because they've not seen enough of him and what he'd have to offer um, and so I feel like it'd just be a good outlet for them it'd be unpredictable it's something it would be a bold call to be able to make but I feel like with the performance that he's putting in the Carabao Cup Phil Foden's showing now more than ever that he is ready to be taken seriously he should be in the Manchester City squad he should be getting a lot more starts and lots more minutes that's my opinion but I do feel like he's that good that he should and with David Silva leaving, possibly Leroy Sane leaving, there's, there's an outlet there in the attacking role that Phil Foden, in my opinion, don't forget about signing plays and then positions, get Phil Foden, in my opinion, see what he can do from now until the end of the season. But, all in all, I feel like Man City's players really do deserve this success. We work really hard, we take the cup competition seriously, we want to win, we do win, uh, and this is what happens when you take it seriously. I think that it's awesome, I think every player now needs to go and enjoy themselves, go and uh, rest and recover, and come back, get a bit of training in, and go into the next cup game against Sheffield Wednesday. Game's coming thick and fast, we've got this game, we've got the derby coming up, we've got Real Madrid coming up before the international break. Lots of games to look forward to, lots of positions to be working for, lots to play for. 
So we'll go again. So there we go. That has been the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy this video, leave a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget also leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button. Press the bell and put your push notifications on. You can find my social media links, Twitter and Instagram in description below. I'm popping up on screen if you want to go and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget also email in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. And I'll see you all again for the next video, which will be the preview for that Sheffield Wednesday game in the FA Cup. So I'll see you then. So it's been JSG Seal Paul. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Another trophy for Manchester City's ever expanding trophy cabinet. Absolutely delighted. Can't get enough with Manchester City winning and winning major trophies. Brilliant. Fantastic. I'll see you all again very soon. Peace. Go and celebrate. Ciao for now.